Okay, so the putty had some time to dry. And I think what we're ready to do is we start ready to shaping the hull. One of the things that came, it's, this is kind of a bummer. When I had made the thickness, the original, the paper model was half of the thickness. And I'm thinking that that was when she was carrying a full load, when she was sitting low in the water. I had wanted to shape the hull and get the hull of the shape all the way to the stern where it kind of came out almost shaped like a T. And then we had the rudder and the propeller. Unfortunately, um, the scale of the model, for me to get the shape of the hull that I want, I would have to bring in the model half an inch on either side and bring it down and get the shape that I want. But then the model would then be in like one 500, 550-ish scale. So that's kind of a bummer. So what I'm gonna do instead is, this is gonna be a waterline model. And we're gonna make her look like she did when she was not carrying any load, where she was going to get, uh, going to pick up a load of iron ore. So I get that's a bummer because I had really wanted to uh, to do the hull, but it's going to have to be a waterline just because it's not. I probably should have done it double. So we've got four of one eighth sheets for the paper model, and I doubled that to eight one inch uh, one eighth inch sheets. Um, I probably should have tripled the um, the thicket the thickness of the model we could have shaped it better. Um, so this is gonna have to be a waterline uh, model. Uh, for future reference, cause I'm learning off this one. Of course, I wanna be respectful to the Edmund Fitzgerald and her crew. Um, so I wanna do a good job on this. At some point, I wanna make a larger one though. Maybe one 200 scale would be pretty cool. But when it comes to the, um, for the hull, she had an anchor on port and starboard, and she also had an anchor at the stern, right in the middle, in the back. And I'm using this for reference because this is out of scale, but I got a couple of extra anchors from the Titanic, the 1700, or the 1500, excuse me. And I wanna see how they're gonna look to put the anchors on the side of the bow on the uh, port and starboard, as well as once it's all sanded, having a little area notched out where the anchor will be inside of the stern. But that's down the road. What I gotta do now is my least favorite <laughs> part of model building, and we gotta sand. So I'm gonna start with the bottom of the hull now. And we're gonna smooth it out, and I'm gonna taper it a bit along the edges. So we have the sanding blocks ready to go. And let's see if I need to change this. I think this is still good. All right, so we're gonna start at the bow. Uh, you can see. And what I wanna do is I wanna angle it just a bit. So first thing I wanna do is I wanna get it all flush. So we're gonna start sanding. Yeah, that's nice and smooth. All right, I wanna get the, the sides. Yeah, that's better. Nice and smooth. Maybe just a bit over here. So when you run your finger along the bottom, you can't feel the seam lines at all. Maybe a little. That's better. 
So the bottom is nice and silky smooth. And I think what we can think about doing now is we'll do the, uh, the sides. So let's start over at the bow. Is that one section we've got to get rid of. I want to smooth it out just a bit. Silky smooth. We don't want to misshape the bow, the point. That looks pretty good. So what I do now is we're gonna come into the side now where the bow meets the side of the ship. We're gonna smooth this out. starting to really feel smooth to the touch and the temptation to use the table sander um, I had thought about it but that I'm not good enough where I can do delicate things with the table sander where we just end up gouging so unfortunately it's got to be done by hand See how I'm trying to start to angle in the bottom of the hull and the back of the stern? So why don't we go ahead and get another piece of sandpaper.
See, look at that. She does have kind of like a point coming back at the stern where it, it is round, but you've got to remember the scope of the ship. So when you see a picture of the aft end um, at the stern, she looks huge, but you've got to be in relation to the length of the ship. So if you're going to get a picture of the stern, it'll be like this, as opposed to seeing the entire length of the ship. You see the, the section that we need to sand, as opposed to the section that we smoothed out with the sanding paper. And just a little bit more. I want to get the, sh the, uh, the stern just to come in just a little bit more, not much more. I don't want to overdo it. just a bit more. looking pretty good Get the shape that I want it's nice and smooth and again she has that that kind of point like shape going all the way to the stern and again when I put a picture up it looks like she's so wide across that's just the scope of the ship because she's so large all right let's start to do the side of the ship now down this way getting pretty nice. See how, well, you can't feel that, but the seam is completely gone. Running your finger over it feels like a single piece of wood. And we'll bring it around. We'll kind of blend it in with the stern. And 
and we'll do the same thing for the other side. Look at that. Alright, I'm going to need another piece of sandpaper because the grit's gone on this one. and smooth all the way down. And like I said, I'm gonna get that curvature in. Get all of the dust off. <coughs> I'll show you guys. Again, it looks like there are seams on camera because of the different coloration, but it's smooth as glass. And when we paint it, you'll see how smooth it came out. You get the slight curvature to the hull. You see the top where the wheelhouse is going to go, going along nice and smooth. Hopefully you can see that from the side. And we'll get the hull shaped on the bottom. Again, this is going to be the water line. So what we got to do now is we'll give a sand to the top and the decks and that's it. The hull will be ready for painting. But before we paint, we're going to have to put the um, the anchors. We'll do the anchors, but we'll do that after we do the hatch covers. So let me give it a just an ever light sand because we're still we want it to be flat. So when we put the little raised areas along the side, that's good. Just enough to smooth out the the surface. So let's put another. Put a fresh sheet of sandpaper on the block and we'll do the area where all the hatch covers are gonna go. the shape that I wanted and this <laughs> believe me guys I hate sanding this is my least favorite part of modeling but in this instance it just had to be done so let me clean everything up and we're gonna take a look at the ship hull okay so everything is clean <laughs> this is a really messy job and I'm not smart enough to do this outside well actually I can't because it's I live in New England, and the high was in the 30s today, and it was windy, so it's the time of the year where it's really not paint friendly or 
project friendly to be working outside. But let me show you guys the finished hull. We've got the bow section and we're going to be putting the boathouse on here and we're going to be putting a little raised area that's going to have the name Edmund Fitzgerald on the side. Everything is nice and smooth running down the side of the ship. And again, the colors are off, but with your eyes closed, it's nice and smooth. All the way back towards the stern. And I wanted to get the, uh, the curvature for the bottom of the stern. Again, we're gonna do the water line. And the only thing left we need to do on the, uh, the hull is right in the middle over here. I'm gonna, we're gonna notch out a small rectangle and we're gonna put the remnants of a anchor. Um, I had to order some 1200 scale parts, uh, excuse me, 1400 scale. What I did was I got the railing because I wanted, we got to put the railings on. And I got a couple of other little photo etch pieces made for ships, like the life preservers and things like that. But we got to put the, uh, the anchor in there because the Emma Fitzgerald had an anchor in the aft end. Right about in the middle just below where it says Wisconsin. Edmund Fitzgerald, Wisconsin, below that in the center, it had the little rectangle with the, the anchor. Coming around the stern, again, feeling it. You can't feel any of the seams. This feels like one piece of wood. And we smoothed out the, uh, the edges. We brought it down a little bit and softened up the edges all the way down the port side. Again, nice and smooth all the way to the hull. And same thing on the bottom of the hull. We smooth out the, uh, the harsh straight edges. And we sand at the top. So now the top is nice and smooth. Because you remember when we first made the model, um, this section went all the way to here. And uh, we had to remove that and we sanded it down. So when it comes to the hull, this is it. It's, this is the finished hull. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ever so gingerly drill a small hole in and glue the anchors into place. That's the only thing that needs to be done to the hull now. So we have the port and the starboard anchors that are gonna go on. And we have the anchor that's gonna go on aft. Um, but I'm gonna do that when we're ready to paint the hull. and. What I want to do, what we're going to do next in the next video is we're going to do all the hatches. And I think that the Edmund Fitzgerald had 20 or 21 hatches, but we're going to count them to make sure. And we're going to start making those. I think, let me get a piece of wood for you guys. Um, this is in 1 8 inch. I'm thinking that an eighth of an inch will probably be a good height. Let me get a smaller piece. Um, do I have any extra hanging around? This is why I like to keep scrap. <laughs> okay, so it's one eighth of an inch. And I think, I think that's gonna work pretty well. So we're gonna do the hatch covers and see how there's a curvature to the hull? We're gonna have to bend them down to, to match the curvature. Well, on the actual, the actual Edmund Fitzgerald, there's also a curvature to the deck. And I think that's to help um, with water runoff. But I think we're gonna, we're gonna mark them out. We're gonna plan them out. We're gonna pencil them in. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and we're gonna cut them on a scroll saw. And We'll be having uh, all the hatch covers on. And once the hatch covers are on, the only thing left to do will be to uh, the paint it. And let me remember if the, I think the anchors are red also. Okay, so the, ankles will, the anchors will also be red. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do all the hatches, all the hatch covers. Then we're gonna do the anchors and the bow and we're gonna do the anchor at the stern. And then she's gonna be ready. And then we're gonna paint it. We're gonna paint her red. Because remember, the hull was red. The sections on top are white. The boathouses are white in the front. 
bow and at the aft they were white. So I wanna, I gotta do some research on the color of the deck around the boathouse. I don't know if it was like a gray color or if it had that special green kind of anti-slip surface. So that's something I'm gonna research. And because remember the little walls are gonna go up here we're going to have the boathouse, but there are going to be little areas in between the boathouse and the sides. Same thing with the stern. We have the, the house that's a little bit larger for the crew quarters and everything. And there was actually a couple of decks that came down and there were little like pylons where you could walk out onto the aft end of the ship on a deck. So we'll do the, the boathouse on the back and then we'll have the little overhang that'll come off and then we'll do the top and on the top deck we have the uh, the smoke funnel and on the sides are the lifeboats um, as far as I know the Emma Fitzgerald had two lifeboats but I gotta I gotta double check that but the, the lifeboats are on the aft end of the ship um, you would think the size of the ship that there would be one at the bow because of the length that it would take to get to the front of the ship. Like if something happens to the ship and you're in a wheelhouse and you gotta to get to the aft end for the, um, the lifeboats, I'm gonna look and do some research to see if there was a lifeboat on the bow. But my friends, that's what we're gonna do in the next video. We're gonna do all the hatch covers. And that's gonna be fun. Um, again, we're gonna, I'm gonna research the ship to make sure we get the correct number of hatch covers. And um, she'll be moving right along. So this video may not have been sexy or exciting, but you know what? We have to do it. It had to be sanded. And believe me, this is my least favorite part of modeling. And due to the nature of the model, unfortunately, my friends, I won't be able to light it. Um, it kills me because you guys that know my channel, you know I love lighting everything. Um, because I decided to go with solid wood, I'm just not going to be able to. But my friends, like I said in the next video, we're going to be doing all the hatch covers of the Edmund Fitzgerald. So my friends, thank you so much. Thank you for the kind words, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.